Well guys, it turned out that my carrier heat pump did need a dipper off board, I guess. I checked on it after I had done the work just to see if it was defrosting and it wasn't. So I'm back here with a defrost board to put it on. She's a little frosted up. So we'll open it up and uh, get out the old failed control and put a new one in. Guys, I notched this metal here so I can drag the board out hopefully without losing too many of the wiring connections. So I keep track of them. I'll take a picture of the thermostat wire connections so I can keep track of the color. And my new board is a little bit different. 318C. It's modeled after the Goodman board. I use this in a lot of retrofits. I also have the sensor for it. So a little bit cheaper. No special reason to go back with the OEM unless you just prefer doing that, which is fine. But since I have the sure switch, it'll keep my short cycling on guard so won't have that issue brownout protection so the board's delay won't be a factor so i will get this thing out of here i'm gonna place a new board in here and make sure we have between common and red 28 volts which we do we want to make sure that is because without red power to the board the timer will not run so you won't have any defrosting anyway so i want to double check the first two wires i'm putting on the board is the outdoor fan motor wires they are broken through a relay you see over here, we see it on the old board. Got that relay right there. You see where they connect to the relay on the pathway. And we're putting that on a new board right there. Now we'll move on to some of the low voltage wiring. This is our defrost board all wired up. We can see on the side here, we have our high voltage wires for the fan. Let's go across the bottom, we have on this side we have comments, one from the reversing valve solenoid, one from just, uh, we meet up with all our other comments down here in this wire nut. We have a Y terminal, that's going to go up to our contactor after it passes through our pressure switch down here, back up to the contactor and then off to the field connection as well. We have our O wires, there's two in a row, one goes to the reversing valve solenoid, one goes to uh, the field connection. Right, these last three are all reds. You can see in there. Let's see if you can see it. There we are. Yeah, our three reds. The two last wires go to the defrost thermostat. This one is from the red field connection. Let's give us 24 volts. Down here, you can see the defrost thermostat. I clipped it on right there. So I'm going to start this thing up at heat, let it run for a few minutes, and then we'll force a defrost. Guys, I'm trying to short out these pins on the test part of the defrost board. See if she goes to defrost and melt some of this ice off that she's been accumulating for a while. Alright, see how she goes. She's warming up. Check back with her in a minute, see how she does after she comes out of defrost, guys. The cold temperatures down there are starting to come up. Once it gets to the low 50s to around 50, it should come out of defrost. So we'll see. I'll track it down and we'll see what happens. Still a lot of ice on the outside just because it accumulated so much. Falling down on the inside, you can tell. So it's not falling down. Alright, we're getting up near 50. Let's see what happens here. Still got a lot of ice on it. Might need to go around one more time. It's warming up. Not really touching the coil. That might be one of the problems. The ice is kind of separated from the coil where it melted, probably, so it's creating kind of a thin sheet there. Alright, well, we'll see. We're up to around 60 degrees on the clamp, so it should be coming out pretty soon. Stay tuned. Guys, we came out of defrost. We still have some ice here left on the side. 
like I said, mostly it's where it's separated from the coil. It didn't quite melt all of it off because there was so much of it. Temperature rose to around 80 or 90 on the clamp before it finally clipped. And all the U-bends are free from ice and the other two sides are free from ice. So what I might do is let it run for a few minutes and then put it through one more cycle. And if that doesn't clear all the ice because it's separated off, I'll just spray it down. Because once I spray it down and separate this ice, or some of it's touching the coil now, it's melting away, but some of it that's separated from the coil, I might just spray it off because it won't come back because the coil won't accumulate any ice on it after the defrost works, so it won't be an issue. But I might need to clear off this initial ice just to make life easier.